気分だ暑くなってきたな私が軽く遊んでやろう最悪でも恵みでも望むものをくれてやろうこれが望みか痛いだろうもっと楽しませろさあ祭りの時間だ存分に楽しんでこい<笑>いいぞいいぞ最高だなファイナルファンタジーブレイブエクスビアス幻影戦争ジェイダン様はハロウィンにお越しにならないのだろうか。Hey guys, this is Udaiba here, and、uh, welcome to my live stream recap video for World of Visions JP official live stream for October 15, 2022.、Uh, so, what you just saw earlier was the trailer for Halloween Lucia, which is, of course, the latest new unit that will be implemented next Monday、uh, in, in World of Visions JP. So, in this recap video, I'm going to just try and briefly cover all of the important information that they talked about、uh, on the live stream this time. There's a, a little bit of a collab, there are some videos,、um, video trailers to watch, and they also talked a little bit about some of the things that are coming up for the third anniversary. Now, first things first, I'm going to tackle this in the order of、uh, things that they explained and talked about. On the stream. So, starting with this thing you see right here called、uh, Streamer Presents Fist of the Vision. This is a basically,、uh, I guess, it's a tournament for streamers for World of Visions. If you're interested in that kind of thing,、um, it's going to take place on October 30th, 8 p.m. JST. Nothing much needs to be said about this,、uh, except I think this is、uh, something that a s a r u t o san wants to do on a more regular basis. And the first time around, this time,、uh, the tournament will have random conditions as its rules, apparently. So, if you're interested in that, be sure to tune in on October 30th. Next up, they talked about、uh, the new unit, Halloween Lucia.、Uh, they gave a bit of、uh, you know, explanation about her backstory and, of course, talked about her abilities. So, I have this. Uh, thing loaded here. I think it's easier for me to talk about it using these slides. So, for those of you who are not aware yet,、uh, Halloween Lucia is a cost 70 dark unit and her main job is Grimoire Master. And let's see here. So,、um, previously they didn't talk about her flavor tags at all, but apparently. Uh, Halloween Lucia is kind of a servant of the underworld, and basically, the setting is such that, well, now that it's Halloween, once again, the forces of the underworld、uh, have a chance to strike back at the forces of light so that they will not be confined you know, to the underworld. And so, now basically, the idea is、uh, Halloween Lucia is trying to gather all of the forces under the banner of the Dark Lord Salier. And together, you know,、uh, the story is basically they're trying to take over the world during Halloween, something like that. It's not a serious story, of course.、Um, let's take a look at the abilities of Halloween Lucia. So, the information that was already unveiled before is that her, her sub jobs are Black Mage and Thief. From, so, the new info this time Black Mage, she's getting Flare, and then from Thief, she gets Steel Heart. Limit Burst、um, is called Mystic Drain, and what this does is it's basically similar to Astra's Limit Burst in that it gives Halloween Lucia a three turn follow up attack, and after that、uh, follow up attack buff has been given,、uh, she will do this move will do a、uh, mag base damage L and absorb a portion of the damage dealt. And this move is、uh, also easier to hit than usual. So, usually, what that means is this move has、uh, accuracy plus 30%. Moving on to the abilities,、uh, these two abilities have been、uh, talked about in the in game notices already. If you didn't already know, the first ability is something called Endo Exeru, which is an AoE attack similar to. 
uh, Lightning's AOE attack. I forgot the name of that move. But basically, even on the uh, even on the live stream, they mentioned that this move is essentially similar to Lightning's AOE attack. So what it actually does though is that um, it does damage M, mag base damage M to all targets, and it will give all these targets caught in the AOE the debuff of three turn defense penetration down. And uh, if there are any targets caught in this AOE that gets KO'd. Halloween Lucia also gets CT up small, up to two uh, KO'd units. <clears throat> so the reason why you know the people on stream were comparing this to Lightning's AoE attack is because obviously if you do if you activate uh, Halloween Lucia's limit burst first to get the follow up attack, and then you use this move right here, it's pretty much a magic version of Lightning's AoE attack. So the other move that was previously already unveiled is called spell of shield and what it does is uh, it gives halloween lucia a physical barrier that will protect up to a certain amount of hp and uh, as well as uh, all to all units in the uh, buff aoe area all those units will also receive defense up finally the uh, new ability that they showcase this time this move right here is called uh, Shredi Taylor. I don't know how you would spell that out in English, but Shredi Taylor is a AOE attack uh, targeting enemies in a straight line up to two squares ahead. And this move will uh, reduce, will greatly reduce the reaction activation rate for the target for this attack only. Uh, and once that is done, it will do mag base damage m and it's a guaranteed hit move finally the one there's actually one last thing that um was actually mentioned about halloween lucia that is um not actually covered here and that is if you read the description of the text it's actually talking about uh, another buff move that halloween lucia has that will give her the ability to do ap damage on her attacks as well as uh, put on protect on her so the general concept for this unit is well so you know in the past there have been a lot of magic attackers that although they can do a lot of um, you know magic damage they are pretty squishy and you know in response to that halloween lucia is meant as a low cost a cost 70 unit that not only not only does a great deal of damage but also has quite a bit of uh defenses and resistances against physical attackers um is there anything else i i think that's pretty much it for the unit herself i think the one last thing that was mentioned on stream is that this um, new main job of hers grimoire master is not something that is uh, specific to halloween lucia alone it's not a unique job uh, if you are not aware, some units, uh, especially cost 100 units in the game, are often given unique jobs that are basically an advanced version of, you know, a, a regular job. For Grimoire Master, it's going to be a new uh, regular job, meaning in the future, you may actually see units that will have Grimoire Master as a main or sub job. So that's the one last thing that uh, the director Fujita-san wanted to mention. So next, we have these things over here, which are also previously covered in the in-game notices. There's a new weapon, a new book uh, called Mischie Mischievous Witch's Diary. And we move on to the vision card. I'm not going to mention the effects here in the interest of time. Uh, I just want to talk about the new thing that was mentioned on stream, which is that the vision ability Triple Nightmare is confirmed to be a 3-hit magic attack that has no activation time required. And the uh, equipment condition for this is as long as you put this vision card on a unit that has a main or sub job that uses a, uh, uh, what do you call this, a rod, you know, as the, the, the weapon, um, any unit that basically has black mage or white mage or any of those jobs that usually uses a rod as the weapon as long as it's there that unit will be able to use the vision ability 
Uh, and one last thing to mention about this vision card. So as you can see here, Halloween Lucia is actually in the background because she is kind of like the servant to Dark Lord Sally here. And um, so unfortunately, Dark Lord or Halloween Sally and uh, Halloween Kreis are not going to be playable units this time around. There are no plans to make them into playable units at this point. But uh, Nakai-san did mention that, hey, if a lot of players really clamor for this unit, really want to see uh, Halloween, uh, sorry, Halloween Salier or Dark Lord Salier a reality, if they really, if the players really want to see it, you know, please let them know in the future, they might do something about that. But it all really depends on the uh, player's response. Okay, so after all this talk about the new Halloween stuff, uh, next the stream moves on to talk about part 3 of the main story. Now I'm going to leave this part to the end of the video because it may, it, it may contain some minor spoilers for some people. So I thought it would be better to leave it to the end. So moving on, the next thing they talked about, or rather the next thing that they showed, is the trailer for Another Story Part 2 Chapter 2, which is entitled... Uh, Itsuwari no Squid, which is, I believe, translates to False Salvation. So, before we talk more about this character here, I think let's just take a look at the actual trailer itself. Ah, <laughs> コクムの力をばらまいてそれを増幅した上で集めているやつがいるどうやらドコモひどい惨状だったみたいだなはいそれじゃあ今回もお仕事を頑張りましょうね私はビクトラルアーサと二人で気ままに旅から旅へってねお
Crystal Warrior will be the new unit, or if this will be the you know the next character that players can pull for in JP uh, for the Darkness Fast. So um, we'll just have to wait for more information of that. Again, nothing was said about what unit will be appearing as the next um, playable unit for in our story. So yeah, all all they really showed this time was just a trailer. So moving forward, uh, next after this, they talked about uh, some of the things that players can expect with the third anniversary update. So uh, unfortunately, there is no visual for us to look at here. But basically, the two main things that uh, Nakai-san talked about here is that, well, the first thing is, you know, during the 2.5 year anniversary, they did a bunch of uh, resource adjustments, like giving us... Uh, temporarily giving us you know access to more energy pots 10 more energy pots per day and things like giving us you know more resources more ways to farm stuff uh, like for example being able to get raid ops from you know story missions and all of that stuff and then after that they took a they they you know took a look at all the data and uh, as well as all the response that you know players had and with that in mind they have more or less decided on you know what they're gonna do for the third anniversary in terms of uh, you know unit building and uh, resource management uh, unfortunately at this time he's not going to go into detail for that yet so we have to wait a little longer for that uh, and then the other thing he talked about is that there will be a new unit strengthening system that will be introduced uh, at the third anniversary so part of the reason for that is because uh, as you guys know there is master ability too for a lot of the older units now and actually they've almost done master ability 2 for almost the entire playable cast for the you know non-limited cast i mean there are still some characters that still have not received their ma2 yet but the number of characters remaining is you know a relatively smaller number now so moving forward for the third anniversary they think now is a great time to you know introduce this new unit strengthening system with the goal of you know, similar to the Master Ability 2, to basically strength, uh, basically improve older units and make them relevant again. Uh, so as to what this new uh, unit strengthening system will entail, again, you know, Nakai-san doesn't want to, you know, talk about it. Uh, he doesn't want to do, like, you know, a half-baked explanation, so he would prefer to explain it in full during the official broadcast for the third anniversary. But one thing he did mention is, you know, um, so far a lot of players have feedback to the team that, hey, we have a lot of extra mind spears for the units that um, are already at level 120. So Nakai-san confirmed that, you know, with this update for the third anniversary or, you know, whatever they choose to implement that new unit strengthening system, uh, we will be able to use all those extra mind spears in some capacity. So some way to burn them, you know, to use for this system or for something else. I'm not sure. But basically, what he did say is that, you know, we will be able to use all those extra mind spears that, you know, we have stored up over a long period of time. And uh, with that, you know, uh, we will unfortunately need to wait for more information. But with the third anniversary coming up in just 30 days from now, uh, I'm sure we'll hear more about it, you know, uh, couple of days maybe a week before the actual anniversary so the other thing he has to share at this point is that the uh, new upcoming guild content the conquest mode so as to speak has finally been confirmed to take place on november 18 to 23 <clears throat> sorry the official name for this game mode has also been confirmed um, but it's kind of, I, I don't really have, like, I haven't really thought of a good way to translate this. But meaning-wise, it's basically a region of war where you go around breaking castles. So, I, I, I haven't thought of an elegant way to translate this in English. But let's just call it the Conquest Mode, the Guild Conquest Mode, right? So, uh, as mentioned, this mode will finally come to the game in JP on November 18 and 23. And interestingly, during this period of time, there will not be any guild battles so that players can fully focus on enjoying this new game mode. Uh, which is, again, is mentioned before that this mode is purely PvE, 
right? So all you have to do is work with your guildmates in trying to clear this content. There will not be any guild versus guild component to it. There will not be leaderboards. It's just about having fun in a PV context within your guild. And of course, this is going to be a uh, recurrent uh, game mode for, for, you know, guild content, especially since they've really poured in a lot of work uh, to make this game mode happen. So moving forward, we, from time to time, we will see this come back, uh, you know, like on a rotational basis, right? And personally, I'm a little bit concerned about what this means for the number of times we will have to play guild battles in a month, because right now, the way it works in JP is that we have about 19 days of regular guild battles and 10 days of limited guild battles. So if, let's say, you know, they do this every month, then that means they have to take out six days of guild battles somewhere. So is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? Mm, I guess we have to wait, uh, you know, for players' feedback to this. But it's certainly going to be something uh, new and exciting to look forward to. Okay, so with that, you know, that is actually the last piece of uh, in-game related announcement they have moving forward. The two last things that uh, they have to talk about are actually things outside of the game itself. And this is where the uh, collab, the collaboration thing comes into play. So they did announce a collab this time during the live stream, but it's not a collab in terms of content. Rather, it is a collaboration between World Divisions and Aces. Republic of Gamers uh, for the ROG Phone 6 series. So in Japan, what's going to happen is that the latest ROG Phone 6 series phones will come pre-installed with World of Visions. And these phones will also have access to a number of different uh, World of Visions, um, what do you call it, background wallpapers that you can use for the phone. Um, as a result of this campaign, they are going to give away two phones as well as a bunch of other World Divisions uh, merchandise but of course this is all Japan exclusive uh, and you know people who want to take part in the raffle will have to do so via Twitter uh, I'm not sure if I loaded this up okay I don't have a slide here but basically well it's not really a collaboration in terms of you know what we are thinking of but hey it's nice to see that uh, in Japan they are trying to you know get more new people uh, into the game. So, hey, something interesting to look at. Maybe they'll do more of this in the future. Maybe they might even consider doing something like this for global, you know, in the future, maybe. Uh, probably not, but hey, one can dream, right? So, the final thing that they talked about, before we, we talk about part 3 main story, of course, the final thing, the final update they have for us is, since 3rd anniversary is coming up, they are going to do a character popularity poll. And this poll will take place between October 17 to October 24. During this period of time, uh, players can go on to the uh, character popularity poll website and make one vote for their favorite male or female character. So players can only vote for one unit per day and the, um, the selection of characters available will only be from the playable cast. And then at the end of the period, at some point in the future, they'll make an announcement on who the most popular male and female characters uh, from this popularity character popularity poll are. Now, different from previous years, uh, so as you guys know, last year they when they did this um, popularity poll, the one of the um, categories that people were asked to vote for was actually for the character they would most like to see in a swimsuit and that character that won ended up being Summer Helena. This time around they're not going to be doing anything of that sort. They're not going to make any promises on you know what what will you know become the uh, what will happen to the most popular unit from the male and female categories. No promises on anything but what they will do is they will look at the list overall and use that to determine <clears throat> or rather to impact future decisions when making new units for the game. So as an example, Fujita-san mentioned, so like for example, if somehow Salie becomes the, uh, is voted to be the number one most popular character, uh, sorry, most popular female character in the game, then that increases the likelihood that the team, the operations team will consider making Halloween Salie a reality. So that's just one example. 
Um, but basically, the idea behind... So why, why are they doing this? So Nakai-san explained that the whole idea of doing this is because, you know, as book three or, or part three of the main story is coming up, you know, right before it happens, they want to just, you know, do an assessment and see what players' uh, favorite uh, playable units in the game are. And then, you know, so that uh, they can make better decisions in terms of what units to make or, you know, or even things like uh, whether or not um, these characters may be something like, you know, that we may see more often in future stories and stuff like that. So basically, it's, they just wanted like a point of reference at this time. Okay, so that is it for the announcement. So finally, we are going to talk about the... Um, what was revealed for part 3 main story. If you are concerned at all about potential spoilers, then this would be a good point to click away and go do something else. If not, you have been warned, I'm going to start playing the trailer for part 3 of main story in World of Visions in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so first things first, maybe I can rewind this a little bit. <laughs> the name of this um, part of the main story is uh, The First War of the Visions, Cross Blood. And the reason why they call this, you know, the first World of Visions is because part three, main story part three, will be the last part in the current ongoing arc. So uh, expect to see, you know, all of the things, all of the events that played out in uh, part one and two to come to a conclusion with part three. And then after that, uh, in the future, I think they're already starting work on the next story arc in the game already and that's why they're calling this the first war of the visions implying there's probably some other war in the future right um so in terms of actual information about units and stuff in part three 
for now they didn't you know reveal a whole lot except that this thing that you're looking here is the key visual for part three of the main story uh, previously Hirono did mention that for the third anniversary they're making two pieces of key visual one has to do with uh part three main story and then and then the other thing is a wedding thing that is meant to celebrate uh, the third anniversary. So with this key visual for part three, as you can see here, there are some characters in new um, costumes. No idea yet if they will actually be new playable units, but we can see here obviously the new Stern, uh, Ramada in Ramada in a new costume, and then this is Whisper, um, yeah, Whisper without her mask. Uh, I don't think she's meant as a new unit or anything. It's just that she's taking her mask for this. And most importantly, this here, if you can see it, is Gilgamesh Unmask. So no idea again if that means we will see this version of Gilgamesh in the future as a playable unit. In fact, nothing has been confirmed in terms of what's coming down the line for new units, but uh, expect to see a lot of, um, well, expect to see all these characters as playing a key role in part three of the main story. And with that, you know, this is pretty much it um, in terms of what they had to show off and discuss for part three. Uh, for more information, you know, about, well, this thing is going to uh, be available for play in JP starting on October 24. So we'll know more information about the new story then if you're interested. And if not, you know, there's a lot to look forward to in uh, the third anniversary for War Divisions. So uh, for now, this is everything that was discussed in the live stream this time around. Uh, thank you guys for watching this uh, live stream recap. I'm sorry it kind of went on a little bit too long. But uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. And I guess I'll see you guys next time in some other video.